Hello, welcome to Rando Tech Info and what will hopefully be a simple and not too painful explanation of C-Band 5G. There are a few articles floating around on the interwebs about C-Band 5G, but most of them get really into the weeds with things like megahertz and gigahertz and lots of other hoity-toity tech jargon. So I wanted to make something that tells you everything you need to know without getting too nerdy. Now I'm based in the US, so when I talk about 5G and how the different network carriers use it, that is the lens I will be looking through. But if you are watching this from another corner of the world, you still might be able to pull some useful information, especially if you are wanting to know how C-band speeds and coverage compare to other types of 5G. The term C-band refers to a specific range of frequency bands. In relation to 5G, C-band falls into the category that is usually referred to as mid-band 5G. Now, for those of you that don't know, there are currently three major flavors of 5G. The first type is low band, or what most people refer to as sub-6 5G. Sub-6 frequency bands travel the farthest of the 5G bands, providing the best coverage, but also the slowest speeds. In fact, sub-6 5G speeds and coverage are very similar to 4G speeds and coverage. And if you live here in the US and your 5G phone is telling you you are receiving a 5G signal, this is probably the type of 5G you're getting, particularly if you're on AT&T or Verizon's network. There's also millimeter wave 5G. Millimeter wave frequency bands are able to carry large amounts of data, but are only able to travel very short distances. As a result, millimeter wave 5G offers very fast data speeds, sometimes over one gigabit per second in optimal conditions. But those optimal conditions are hard to find because 5G millimeter waves only travel about one city block from their source and the waves can't pass through objects like people, trees, or walls. Because of this, millimeter wave 5G is only available here in the US in very densely populated areas. Finally, we have mid-band 5G. Mid-band 5G frequencies, as the name implies, sit between sub-6 and millimeter wave frequencies. Mid-band frequencies don't travel as far as sub-6 frequencies, but can carry more data and offers faster speeds. They can't carry as much data or offer the same speeds as millimeter wave 5G, but they can travel much farther. Mid-band 5G is the type of 5G used in most other parts of the world, and it's the primary battleground where the future of 5G here in the US will be fought. If you want to see an in-depth look about how mid-band 5G speeds compare to sub-6 5G speeds, you're in luck because I made an entire video about just that. And if you want to watch it, I will leave a link to it down in the description of this video. And if you find this type of tech journalism to be your thing, you might want to think about subbing to the channel. All right, I will definitely do that. As of right now, T-Mobile is the only network carrier here in the US with a significant mid-band 5G footprint. AT&T and Verizon are looking to change this though, and that is where C-band 5G comes in. Large chunks of the C-band frequency range were recently auctioned off for use by the FCC in 2021, and predictably, in order to better compete with T-Mobile, Verizon and AT&T were the big buyers. Now, as mentioned earlier, C-band 5G is a type of mid-band 5G, meaning all C-band 5G frequencies fall under the mid-range 5G frequency range, but not all mid-band frequencies are C-band frequencies. Everybody got that? The mid-band 5G frequency bands T-Mobile currently uses travel farther than the C-band frequencies that will be used by Verizon and AT&T, but don't carry quite as much data. This means that it will be harder for AT&T and Verizon to match T-Mobile's mid-band 5G coverage. But Verizon and AT&T's mid-band 5G speeds could be faster if and when they reach your area. Not to be completely outdone, T-Mobile also purchased some C-band frequencies for their own use, but those frequencies will not be utilized until 2023. One last thing that probably needs to be mentioned here is the current controversy surrounding C-band frequencies and the US Federal Aviation Administration. The FAA has concerns that C-band 5G can affect the altimeters in certain planes, which apparently can affect the pilot's ability to do certain things with the plane, such as landing. Now it should be known that C-band frequencies and the frequencies used by these altimeters are not actually the same, but it seems they are close enough to give the FAA pause. These concerns have already delayed Verizon and AT&T C-band deployment, and further delays could be forthcoming, along with possible deployment limitations around airports. Hey everybody, quick post-production note here. So apparently the first round of C-band 5G towers are going to be activated tonight at midnight. So by the time you watch this video, that will have already happened. So if you're on AT&T and Verizon, you may see some improvement in your speeds and coverage by the time you watch this video. One other thing worth mentioning is the FAA is still not feeling entirely warm and fuzzy about this rollout, so both AT&T and Verizon have agreed to not activate any towers within two miles of any major airports here in the US, at least for the time being. So at the end of the day, exactly what does all this mean? Well, it means that barring any more major delays, thanks to the purchase of C-band frequencies, Verizon and AT&T should get a nice boost to their 5G speed and coverage in 2022 and beyond, assuming you have a device that can take advantage of it. This boost won't happen overnight, and T-Mobile's 5G lead will probably still hold up for a while longer. But Verizon and AT&T now at least have the tools in their toolkit to catch up. 
Whether they actually do this and how long it will take remains to be seen, but ideally this will lead to some better competition between the carriers, which will hopefully benefit consumers. Well, that's all the information I have for one day. If you are a current T-Mobile customer, please feel free to share down in the comments where you live and what type of 5G speeds you're seeing so we can help our friends on Verizon and AT&T decide if mid-band 5G speeds are something they should care about. As always, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching. Until next time, this is Rando Tech Info, signing out.